guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to take you through part two of my decoding weather satellite imagery with the $10 USB dongles. Hey guys, welcome back. Glad you could join me today. Today we'll take a look through some of the settings that I didn't touch on and some that I did in the last uh, video, part one of the NOAA WeatherSat recording. So what I have is a $10 USB SDR radio plugged in and hooked up to a proper QFH antenna for retrieving NOAA satellite imagery. You can see on the screen here we actually have a NOAA sat in range, it's just not a, a very good pass, it's NOAA 18 and it's in the direction I have some troubles receiving on. So we're not decoding this pass, but uh, we'll take a look at some of the settings quick and uh, some of the things I've found uh, by trial and error. So uh, I covered before, here's the settings that I'm using. Uh, 1.4 million sample per second, I'm guessing, is the, the unit there. Cranked right out on the gain. Uh, with this antenna, I don't have a problem doing that. And my particular dongle takes a frequency correction of 82. So what we are is uh, we're in wide FM at uh, 36,000, and I'm hooked up to the uh, Orbitron satellite tracker. And this has been giving me some fits lately, and uh, it was a pretty easy fix. So uh, this is the rotor radio tab. This is what tunes SDR Sharp automatically for Doppler. But the handy feature that I just finally got working is the fact that it will tune the active sat uh, depending on when it comes in range and uh, depending on which in my case I'm doing three different NOAA sats they're on different frequencies so we're connected here uh, simply load the TLE including the, uh, the weather sats and just select the NOAA sats if that's what you're going to be working with in uh, in here there's not much other than verifying that you have the correct downlink frequency. In my case, uh, Orbitron was incorrect initially, so you just type it in there. Easy. Uh, put in, obviously, your home location, all the good stuff. In the main tab, there are there's a lot of settings to this program, but this is the key ones I've found. So, uh, not much here. Pretty easy, pretty uh, pretty straightforward where to all you a lot of this you leave factory leave it as default um, much there this is the tab that I was missing for so long so what I had is I was able to tune into the satellite as long as I selected it and made it active this right here the AOS notification makes satellite active Orbitron dings anytime a satellite comes into range this will automatically bring it to the rotor radio tab uh, to tune the rotor radio for that satellite which is the setting I was missing for a long time this uh, I got an awful lot of blank images in uh, uh, WX2 image as a result of it not tuning the right sat so hope that helps someone that one uh, sure helped me so if we go over to the WX2 image program there's a free version of this available uh, I am using the paid version, so some of the settings are going to be different and lacking in the free ones, but the basics are, are the same. What I use, well, first off, this is a NOAA 19 pass I captured a, a short time ago. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the results. You can see uh, with this decoding, it turned out pretty darn good. I'm pretty impressed. So if we go into the uh, recording options Over. you can see I'm recording line one virtual audio cable this is coming from SDR sharp right the line one if I want to listen to it I just start up a virtual audio cable repeater and send it out to my speakers uh, not much else in there what uh, what I like is these auto processing options so this will be a little different in paid and free but the basics are the same. Uh, we can we will automatically process the images uh, when it captures them. So this is entirely autonomous when I'm not around the computer. In the image settings, we select 
what different styles of images we want. Um, all the ones that are blue are the ones that I like. And we can just cancel it and that. We can create movies. This doesn't work for me. It uh, seems that the codec is bad. Uh, create composite images is the same as the previous, except um, as a as a composite, and you can put all the references in there. This one, this is the one I just simply love. Add images to web page. So what we do is we select all the, the items we like are uh, different decoding, and again, they're different in the freeware. Uh, set it up, and what I do is just send mine to my Dropbox folder. That way, uh, it saves to Dropbox, and I can receive these on my phone or PC anywhere. But there's even one more step to that. When you save it to Dropbox, you are able to save it into a folder in the public and then you do copy public link and if we paste that public link send it to you out there I'll put it in the description of the video you Dropbox will host the website for you so I don't know whether they ever intended that with Dropbox but I can tell you it works just fine so therefore every time there's a satellite pass it saves to my Dropbox and then I can access it from the internet or anyone can anywhere so uh, these are some composite images from earlier today and when you click on it it opens it in a nice new window and, which I can't scroll for some reason on Chrome I'm not sure why that is it works fine in Internet Explorer but uh, any of the ones that you don't need to scroll much will be just fine and uh, yeah, you can set it up to do whatever style of images you want. And as many as you want, as often as you want, it's fully configurable, pretty handy. So there's another pass I caught of the uh, NOAA 19. Pretty cool. Uh, like I say, I don't know whether Dropbox really planned that you do that, but it works just fine. And I'm pretty sure that is possible in the freeware version. Maybe not. Um, I know you can do a web page, I just don't know whether you can specify where it goes in the free version of this program. So that is about the extent of it, other than setting up your receiver location, etc. There's not much to this other than getting the slant correction right, and uh, uh, that was a big deal once until I got the, the sample rate dialed in here on my dongle. I can't go over 1.4 otherwise I cannot do slant correction in the WX2 image. I can do anything less though and it comes out fine. And then uh, the slant correction is basically just a calibration and you just follow one of these lines across the screen when they're all uh, messed up and trace it out and then this program realizes which way is which and decodes it as a normal image. This one could still be straightened a tiny little bit. It's just got a little bit of a tilt to it, but that is about it. Um, satellite pass list, you maybe saw this at the bottom of the web page. It tells you when the next passes are, so it really doesn't matter when you've set it up automated like I have here. Really great, simple, uh, great use for these $10 SDR dongles if you're into uh, decoding your own SAT images. Pretty handy. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps someone. Let me know in the comments section if it did.